Good morning and happy Easter to each and every one of you. People of God, Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. And here we are on this Easter Sunday in a new place. Well, you're all in a new place. I happen to be here in the sanctuary, as you can see, broadcasting from the 1755 studios, otherwise known as the Old Sloop Sanctuary. The Easter flowers are in bloom behind me, and you're all here with me. People of God, no matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself in your walk of life, your faith journey, welcome home to the old sloop. Welcome home on this amazing Easter Sunday, where no matter what we feel we've been going through, the sun is out, it is an amazing day, and we are together, scattered but gathered through this media and through the amazing talents of many of the people in this congregation. But I will mention that later. Just as Peter and the beloved disciple and Mary found the tomb empty on Easter morning, we find sanctuaries, mosques, temples, all kinds of places of worship empty this day throughout the world. This day for Christians is the pinnacle of our faith. This is the big day. This is what we are about. We are Easter people. But even though they found the tomb empty, and even though they had no sense of how to describe it. In their minds, the only thing they could think of is somebody had stolen Jesus' body. I know for many of us, we may feel the same way. But this morning, this morning, we will walk together through this Easter service, together here, together as a community, together throughout the world. Happy Easter. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. And now Katie will lead us in the prayer of invocation. Good news, God. Your angels appeared to Mary, bringing her news more wonderful and awe-inspiring than she could imagine. Christ is risen. Surely your angels can interrupt our lives too, breaking into our losses and sorrows and offering a message of tremendous joy to change our lives. Come this Easter morning, we pray, and fill us with the joy of Mary who first witnessed your resurrection, that our lives may be renewed in hope and glory. In Christ we pray, amen. beautiful piece of music we were just treated to. People of God, this is our time together in worship where we pass the peace. We're going to do it a little differently. 
and we are going to borrow a video made by the conference um, for this day, a way of passing the peace a different way. And on this day, in these times, I think we need to remember that when we pass the peace, peace brings with it hope <coughs> and joy. And here, let us enjoy this video as we pass the peace. from for today is from uh, Psalm 118 the NI New International Verses ver version verses 1 and 2 and 14 through 24 give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love endures forever let Israel say his love endures forever the Lord is my strength and my defense he has become my salvation the Lord <clears throat> shout for joy and victory sound in the tents of the righteous the lord's right hand has done mighty things for us the lord's right hand is lifted high the lord's right hand has done mighty things for us i will not die but i will live and proclaim that the lord what the lord has done the lord has chastened me severely but he has not given me over to death 
Open for me the gates of the righteous, and I will enter in giving thanks to the Lord. This is the gate that the through which the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Gospel reading is John 20, 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for their tomb. Both were running. The other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the, the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb try, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said to them, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not, did not realize it, that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have yet to ascend to the Lord, the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples and said the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Do you pray with me now? Gracious and holy God, this morning I ask you to move the words of my mouth in the meditation of all our hearts by your loving hand. And I ask you to help me this day not to be the instrument of my own or anyone else's oppression, but to find ways to be an instrument of peace in every moment of every day. Amen. People of God, this is the Easter passage that you just heard. It is one of those few passages that shows up in all four Gospels, each one a little different. But here, that beautiful passage that Joe just read is the one that has the fullest of the story. And there's probably at least eight different things that you could preach about, or I could preach about, or anyone. The fact that um, Mary preached the first sermon in the Easter world, when she went back to the disciples and say, I have seen my Lord, he is risen. She didn't need to go to seminary. She didn't need to actually do anything but feel what she was driven 
to share with others by her love and her astonishment and the joy and hope that came with it. Mary Magdalene is truly the first disciple of the risen Christ. But I wanna focus more on a piece that we don't talk about often. In the scripture, we hear Jesus tell Mary, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. Do not hold on to me. What happens when we hold on to Jesus? What happens when we hold tight and won't let him go? Let me share with you an ancient story I learned many years ago. It comes from the Middle East and I've adapted it over the years, but I've never used it in this context. It is the story of a beautiful garden, a beautiful garden created in a kingdom by the master gardener of that kingdom. Now he was tasked to put together this garden and fill it with beautiful plants and trees and shrubs and water and everything to be a place of contemplation, a place of beauty, be a place of spiritual rest and renewal for all who came to it. As the garden grew into its own and matured, every day the gardener came to it, he would stand in front of his favorite thing in the garden, the bamboo tree. It was beautiful and it had grown full and mature and the bamboo tree loved the gardener. And every time the gardener came, the bamboo tree would shake its leaves and its fronds and dance in the wind and it touched the gardener so. He so loved the bamboo tree that every time he came into the garden, it was the first place he went to. Over the years, they developed a deep relationship with each other. The bamboo tree always excited to see the gardener and dancing in the wind. And then when other people would come, come to be spiritually renewed, come to find peace, come to have quiet contemplation, she would dance. Whether it was a soft wind or it was a gale, she always danced and she always touched people. Most of the people who came seeking something in the garden from the kingdom always left and shared that the bamboo tree dancing for them was the most beautiful thing they had ever experienced. They found peace, they found joy, they found hope and they felt loved. And this went on for years until the bamboo tree noticed that the number of people started to slow down a little bit at first and then more and more. And one day the gardener came in looking very sad. And the bamboo tree said, what, what is it? What is the problem? And he said, for the first time, there is nobody here to see you today but me. No one else is coming. The world has entered a time when no one feels they need joy and hope and love, and things seem to be drying up as in the desert. And I don't know what to do. And the bamboo tree said, let me think about it here in this beautiful garden. And you come back tomorrow. The next day the gardener came and the bamboo tree said, you need to do something for me. I think I can help you, but in a different way. But first you need to cut me down. The gardener was shocked. He said, how, how could I cut you down? You have been a joy of my life and you're so beautiful. And the bamboo tree said, don't hold on to me. If you wish to make a difference, trust me. So the gardener cut the bamboo tree down and laid her on the ground. It was cold there, not connected to her roots. 
but she still had her leaves and fronds and they wrapped around her and kept her warm until the bamboo tree told the gardener, you need to trim away all my leaves and fronds. And the gardener said, but, but I can't. They dance so beautifully when you move. And she said, don't hold on to me. Let me go. And the gardener trimmed away the leaves and the fronds. <clears throat> and the bamboo tree laid there in the dirt feeling the wind blow across her and she was very cold and she was scared. And the gardener said, what, what do I do now? And the bamboo tree looked at the gardener and said, you need to split me open in half. And you need to cut out all that is inside of me, the very heart of who I am and hollow me out. The gardener cried, he said, I can't, I can't do that. And the bamboo tree said, please, don't hold on to me. And the gardener split the bamboo tree in half and with shaking hands, he cut out all the middle of the bamboo tree, the very heart of the bamboo. And then he lifted the bamboo in its brokenness and bent down and he could hear her whisper and tell him what to do. Very gently and reverently, he carried the bamboo tree to the back of the garden and laid one end in the beautiful spring that fed the garden and the other end in the dry desert on the other side of the garden. And he kneeled next to the bamboo tree and he prayed. At first, the bamboo tree was still so afraid. She was broken, torn apart, and felt naked. But then the water started to rush and dance and sing down through the bamboo tree and out into the dry desert. And the bamboo tree was warmed by the cheer and the delight of the water sliding down her. It sounded like music and dancing to her. And her heart was filled with joy. Soon, sprouts started to grow in the earth that was dry. And after that came the harvest time. And the bamboo tree, once so gracious in her dancing for the gardener and all the people that came to see her, was even more gracious in her brokenness, bringing new life to that whole field. Once she had been life abundant, now she was the bringer of abundant life to the whole world beyond the garden for all time to come. Don't hold on to me, Jesus said. If we try to hold Jesus in one place, he will not be able to go and do the work that he is here to do. I love this scripture and I love that story because it reminds me so much of what I've been suffering with not suffering, but struggling with for the last four weeks. The fact that we can't worship in our sanctuary, where we can gather together and be in the presence of God, of Jesus, and listen to the words and share and praise and be a community. But Jesus tells Mary, do not hold on to me, for I have yet not ascended to my Father, your God. People of God, together when we gather, no matter how we gather, Jesus is with us. Jesus does his work through us in so many different ways, but we can't hold on to him. 
we need to let him go to do the work, to allow him to do his work through us, whatever that work may be. This Easter morning in this time, in this very strange and different time where the world is becoming more connected through this horrendous pandemic, let us not hold on to Jesus. Let us share him with all we meet. And let us this day also remember all our brothers and sisters, our family of faith, who practice their faith in different ways, because everybody is going through the same thing. In the mosques, in the temple, in the synagogues, outside, in the mountains, on the shores, wherever they meet. This day, let us hold each other up and let us hear those words of Mary Magdalene when she ran back to the di disciples and said, I have seen our Lord and he is risen. Now go and tell everyone. That's my story this morning and I'm sticking to it. Amen and amen. You are now going to be privileged with hearing the Old Sloop Virtual Choir, and they will be singing um, a tune that you recognize, but the words were written by Carol Winfred Gillette, Reverend Carol Winfred Gillette, and their words written exactly for this Easter. And it's called This Easter Celebration, and I believe Jeff told me that the words will show up on the screen. You will be muted, but feel free to sing along and listen as we are privileged to listen to our virtual choir this morning. Thank you. 
God, as we close our eyes and bow our heads, please join me to pray. We remember that you are still here, even if we cannot see you. We know this Easter celebration is not like ones we've known or that we're used to. We are praying in the isolation of our homes. We are distancing ourselves from our neighbors, but you are the God of dark places and reminding us of the light, the light that comes with this Easter day. We, na- we may not be together to sing, to pass the peace and join each other for coffee hour, but our joy won't come from our traditional Easter service. Our joy will come from the news, the news of the woman who saw the empty tomb. In all the grief and suffering, may we remember that we are no longer bound by sin and darkness. We are living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom. Church, come stand in the light. Our God is not dead. He's alive. Amen. People of God, I want to invite you now to join me in the Lord's Prayer. And as we pray this prayer, let us really listen to the words that we say. Let us remember all those people who have lost their lives to this pandemic. All those people who are working in so many different places in so many different ways to keep us all safe. May we be open enough to listen to those who share with us the thoughts of how to keep this from spreading. I hope you all have a mask, as now in Rockport, we are supposed to be wearing them everywhere we go. Um, And I hope we respect that. Somebody said to me this week, well, I don't need to wear a mask, I'm not worried about getting anything. My response was, well, do you worry about giving somebody something that can take their life? They hadn't thought of it in that way. We have the opportunity to care for one another in a new way. Let us do that together. And now I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer and we'll use the traditional version But if there's a version that you know in a language that you feel more comfortable saying it in, I invite you to say it in whatever way you are comfortable. As we are bold together this morning to say, Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Even though we are not together, um, a part of our worship service has always been um, an offering. It is the tradition of this congregation that on Easter, there's usually a separate envelope in your um, offering if you pledge to the church, or we have other envelopes put in the bulletins that say Easter offering. And it is our tradition that we take the money for the Easter offering not from your pledges, but for the Easter offering. And we donate it to a nonprofit that we work with, that we know what their ministry is. This year, the money we raise through the Easter offering will go to help RIM, the North Shore Cluster of Refugee Immigration Ministry that Jay and Barbara have a longstanding um, relationship with and that we have supported for a number of years. Um, in the midst of all this, we need to remember those people, the immigrants, the refugees, asylum seekers, people that have no home. They can't get back to their own countries because there's no travel internationally anywhere. We need to remember all of them and to remember none of those situations discriminates against somebody because of their age. Young and old, infant, middle-aged, they are our neighbors. And as scripture tell us, tells us, we are to love and care for the refugees as we care for our own. I invite you sometime this week or today to remember the Easter offering for the church. You can mail it into the church, um, just put on the check or however you do it, Easter offering. I also invite you to remember, um, if you can, to honor your pledge. I know for a lot of people, this is a financially hard time. And we're not telling you to put the church before anything else. Put your safety and care of your family before anything else. But we are here. We continue to work as a church. And... Um, a lot of you have been sending your money in, and we are so grateful. Let us now bow our heads and together bless the offerings. And I'm going to ask everybody to put their hands up. You don't have to have the money out or whatever unless you wish to. Gracious and holy God, we give you great thanks and joy for the gifts that come to this church that can be used in so many different ways through all our varied ministries. Help us to know that we are blessed in giving and sharing, not only of ourselves, but of our finances and our time and our love with everybody. We ask you to bless us in our giving and use these gifts wherever the need is greatest, here at home in Rockport on Cape Ann or throughout the created world. Amen. And thank you for allowing me a moment to talk to you. I'm going to give you the final benediction I want to beforehand. Thank you all for joining us online right now through Zoom at least. There's about 91 of us gathered together, which is pretty cool. I can see most of you. I can see that some of you are dressed up in your Easter finest. Thank you very much. Many of you have on nifty hats which is great. And many of you with youth in the youth choir are watching and it's so great to hear your voices. And I do need to thank, it takes a lot of people to pull this off and we're learning as we go along. Jeff Lyons put in so much time this week to make the virtual choir work, to make the other things work. Um, Katie and Phil and Christina and Jim 
have all been involved in so many ways to make this work. I just get to sit here on Sunday morning in the sanctuary, put on a pair of headphones and pretend that I'm on a radio show or something. But we thank you for joining us. It is so wonderful to see you all. Some of you from coming from different parts of the country, from the West Coast, from the South down in Florida, from all over. And we thank you for joining us. If you have people that you know would like to experience this, they can join us in the future or we are on um, local cable access. This will be replayed tomorrow, I believe, at five in the afternoon, and then again Tuesday morning at seven. I think it's channel 67, but I'm not positive. Somebody, if I'm wrong, could jump in and say something, but it's a local cable access channel. And once again, I thank everybody in the choir, both the adult choir and the youth choir. And I thank you, all of you who have been out making masks and sharing them with each other. I would put my hat on, but it doesn't fit over the, uh, well, I guess it does kind of fit over the, um, it's supposed to be a really slick fedora, but the plastic eggs fell off. I'm gonna wait a minute because I just saw somebody get up and leave the couch. There he is, oh, Nate's got his hat on, so I'll put mine back on. And now if you'll join me in prayer as I give you the benediction and then Phil will say a little something about the postlude. In the meantime, happy Easter from each and every one of us here at the Old Sloop. May your day be blessed with the knowledge that Christ has risen. There is hope in the world. Let us share it with each other. And may God bless us in this new day. The love of the cosmic Christ fill our hearts and the wind of God's spirit guide us on our journey, even though we're not sure where that journey is going today. Amen. And now Phil Swanson. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, just a few words, if I may. Thank you. It's great to see everyone. Uh, I'm going to reiterate what uh, Derek said. Uh, and you aren't, Jeff, you won't like me saying this, but you, Jeff has been working uh, all day, every day, and taking calls. I call him at least five times a day. Sorry, Jeff. So, what you saw is coming from Old Sloop Production studios on Whale Cove Lane. It's amazing, the virtual choir he pulled together in two days. Thank you for singing. Uh, it was a tremendous, intense, wonderful experience. Thank you for joining us. Anyone who would like to be in the virtual choir, uh, get a hold of me. Sorry, Jeff, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> and uh, also, thanks to the Hearst uh, family. They're safely back from Scotland and England, and we look forward to hearing from them in the coming weeks. And of course, Christina, who was roaming about uh, taping the kids yesterday, and thank you kids, you're just bringing light into the day for us. And um, Derek, who has been uh, every day we change the entire plan of the service and he's like, okay, whatever, fine. So thank you, Derek, for being so accommodating. 
Um, and one other musical announcement at 4 p.m. today, uh, if you go to revels.org, R-E-V-E-L-S.org, there'll be a hymn sing led by David Coffin, who many of you were here when he led a few worship services here during Derek's uh, sabbatical. He's head of the Revels, and so there's, I'm sure it'll be uh, a wonderful experience knowing David. So 4 p.m. today, Revels dot org and you can join them so we'll conclude uh, the service today and get you on on your way from one room to another i guess and and uh with uh a piece by andre compra uh who's a french composer this would be this may be 1730 called it's a march from a ballet suite, and this has been arranged for um, organ and brass, as was the prelude that was uh, Rimsky-Korsakov. It's being performed by, let me hold this up, this group right here, that's Barbara Bruns, and you might recognize a few other people in there. This is uh, the brass group and organ, that's Old West Church, the actual church organ that's the organ at um christ church in andover where barbara plays so this was recorded on several different organs this organ was built by cb fisk of gloucester mass founded by charles fisk of rockport mass it's a beautiful instrument so uh we'll leave you with just a very short spirited work by andre compra and it's wonderful to be with all of you and be safe, be well, and have a wonderful, blessed, joyous Easter. Thank you.